Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Our guest today is Mark Winslow. He's a guitarist and band leader and trainer of musical Jedis, one of whom is my co-host in this episode and my very dear friend, Doug Marcos. You'll hear much of the story of Doug and Mark's relationship in the episode, so I'll let it happen there. But I'll summarize it by saying that Mark is Guitar Yoda, and Doug, as his dutiful Padawan, brought his importance and the beauty of his mission to my attention and suggested we capture it. And since Doug listens to every single episode of the Break It Down show, well, I couldn't say no, and here we are. I think you're going to love them both. I sure do. Now, as we always do, we want to ask you to consider supporting our favorite charity, which is Save the Brave. You can read about them at savethebrave.org, and you can support them, as we do, with some money or some of your time. Also, you can get me at john at breakitdownshow.com or pete at pete at breakitdownshow.com. And if you're a musician or content creator of any kind, ask us about Trubify where we can help you get paid better than any of the other streaming sites. It's an app built by musicians for musicians, and it's still in development, but we'd love to tell you about it and get you on board so you can get paid. Just for one example, our friend Bryce Vine has his video on YouTube for the single Drew Barrymore. That's the name of the song. You should go check it out. The video is awesome. And I guess he's made ah, probably about enough money from his YouTube views to buy a no frills midsize car. That same number of views on Trubify would have earned him over a million dollars. So please do ask us about it. You can DM us or reach us through all the socials or send us emails. Anyway, thank you so much, Dougie, for introducing me to Mark. He's an amazing guy and a musical treasure trove. Thanks, everyone, for listening and supporting us. And thank you, Mark, for entertaining thousands and mentoring a generation to do the same. Here's our guest. Mark Winslow. Lions Rock Productions. This is Jay this Moore. This is Greg Proops. This is Jordan Harbinger. This is Dexter from The Offspring. This is Nathan this East. This is Sebastian Younger. This is Rick Morales. This is Stuart Copeland. This is Mick Gillette. This is Andy Summers. Hey, this is Scott Baxter. This is Gabby Reese. This is Rob Bell. Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Hey, and this is Pete A. Turner. <laughs> this is Mark Winslow, and you're listening to the Break It Down Show. And now, The Break It Down Show, with John Leon Guerrero and Pete A. Turner. Yes, you are. And here we are. We're at Mark Winslow's house. Now, Mark Winslow is a guitarist and was the mastermind and musical creative force behind... Uh, refresh my memory, Doug. These push bands play. were called Push, push Play, play band, and or maybe Rock Zone. Rock Zone. You might have known them as Rock Zone. And these bands were essentially variety bands that worked in exactly. and around Northern California, Sacramento, yeah. um, playing places like Arco Arena for the oh, Kings. Yeah, for the Sacramento Kings. And, uh, That's gigs. And doing uh, gigs for corporate parties where you were entertaining Many hundreds, many thousands. Yes. Um, black and white ball was black and white about balls. 10, Oh, yeah. Lot that of, was a big event. Lots of them. Every year. Every year. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so we're um, joined also by a longtime dear friend all my life, although yes. we went through a big gap where we didn't see each other, and we just recently picked up exactly where we left off. Yes. Uh, Doug Marcos, who's a fantastic guitar player. I'm going to tell is. you. Um, we've had a couple guitar players on this show. Most recently, Elliot Randall, nice. uh, Andy Summers, nice. Scott Baxter. Yeah. Uh, but today's the day. Today's the today's day. Today's the brother. day we, we get Mark Winslow. Okay. Yes. So uh, we're off and running. So, Mark, one of the things that Doug was telling me about was that uh, Doug, as a um, young metalhead, uh, yeah. and ha had some chops, but he said that you completely rebuilt, rebuilt his entire approach to music and all of his guitar playing. Can you speak to that? Yeah. Is that I, true? I, I can. Um, I think really Doug had all the talent all the time. And when I first met Doug, I could see it the very first time. Yeah. He came over. It was... Uh, was it a formal audition, or were we just getting oh, to know yeah. each other? Oh yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So it was a there was a, it was a pe pressure process. Yeah. <laughs> I had five. I had five, and no less than five auditions. And sometimes I had to audition against the people that were also auditioning. Like head to a head. Reality show. Yes. Head to head. <laughs> oh man. And I think, oh my God, this person's much better than me. But I had. That's the kind of show you were running, huh, Mark? You it just was throw them in the ring. Yes. Yeah. And and it was because 
to join this band. I was already a fan. I had seen them play Arco Arena. Okay. I wanted in bad. Sure. And uh, and when I first, you don't know what you don't know. So I show up my first audition mm -hmm. and I yeah. bring the crappy <laughs> equipment I was using in bars. <laughs> and yeah. You don't know what you don't know. And that equipment wasn't going to fly. And that's, no. that's what I learned most. Well, how, how old were you that very first time? 35. 35. Big break came when I was 35 years old, believe it or okay. not. Okay. I was a school yeah. bus driver. So you were a school bus driver, and <laughs> you went to this audition, and then suddenly you um, are faced with having to get in the ring and cut heads <laughs> yeah. with other guys. It, yeah. Your first audition, was your first audition like that? My first audition was just alone with him and the bass player. Okay. And that's when so I So it gave you an opportunity to see if he could get in the ring. Yeah. 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 And then you determined at that point, all right, he's got something. Yep. I knew right away. As soon as we played, I, I didn't um, see, like you said, the chops weren't there. No. But I could tell they, they could be there. Mm-hmm. Because Doug was yep. so much, he, he wanted to learn so, so bad, bad. Ah. that I knew that I could uh, get across my the things I like to do. This is great. And uh, he sure did. It's I like when you see a young him. fighter and he walks in the gym and you're like, look at him. He's awkward and he's <laughs> clumsy. And he's, I don't know yeah. what that, I don't know what that is that he's doing, but yeah. he's got something. Yeah, that's exactly you, right. You could tell there was an aptitude and a, what's more important, aptitude because taking away somebody who just walks in with blinding chops and amazing, you know, chord uh, knowledge and stuff, you, you got a kid who walks in who's a kid who's 35, a kid who walks in <laughs> and what you see in him is something that's not there yet. But the potential is there because you can recognize, is it aptitude? Is it willingness? Is it what, which, what's more important? I think it was the aptitude. Okay. Personally. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what got me. I, I just... You saw a you know you, you got intuition into. too. You, you're in the business for long enough. You can tell yeah. somebody that's got to tell you how good they are. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Yeah. That's or not, you can that's not Doug. Yeah. No. no. Yeah. And you could tell people that um, sincere good music. Uh, I call them session players. Yeah. Um, they don't have to tell you. No. Exactly. You're gonna figure it out yeah. real, real. You'll quick. hear it in the take. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Doug didn't. Wasn't ready for that, but I, no. I trusted he would be. Okay. And the guy would go home and practice all night all long. Night, all yeah. night. But you didn't know that from the very first time you heard him. No, no, sir. But Something I, told you that was there. My though. intuition, mainly, i yeah. got to say, honestly. Yeah. And I kept coming back. And, <laughs> and <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't take no for an answer. <laughs> take no for an answer. And Lynn. Uh -huh. Lynn. Who's, oh, so he... It, and he came on Lynn's recommendation. Yeah, right? and Lynn, you know Lynn. So Lynn's, she's yeah. The great Lynn Perry. Now, yeah. Lynn Perry is a piano player for our audience. Uh, she's a piano player who we've known since we were kids. And she was yes. already, in high school, she was already a pretty accomplished oh, yeah. piano player. Yeah. But I, I would say that in high school, as much as she knew, she hadn't established her own musical identity yet. No. She was just, she, she had dexterity and yeah. she had been taught well and she received it well. So she had some execution and enough that she earned a spot in the band. Yeah. Um, and her singing. That's kind of interesting because when she came to audition, um, uh, the other guitar player I had at the time uh, was, we were going to work with her, see if she had what we were looking for. Mm -hmm. He didn't show up. Oh, so, okay, <laughs> so this was her audition, and her and the other chord player in the yeah. in the band yeah, wasn't there. Control. Yeah, Lori was there, one of our other singers and keyboardists. And yeah. keyboards, okay. yeah. And she, you know, tried to make her feel comfortable because we could tell she was very nervous. Nervous, okay. And uh, you don't want somebody nervous, like you. You just want them to relax the best you can. Yeah. And. Uh, well, and she's under, I mean, it's a pressure situation. Like oh, you said, yeah. it's a, it, this is an audition, and it's for a, a coveted gig. Yes. I mean, the thing about Lynn, too, is she's also got a lot of humility, but she's yeah. filled with, she's got great chop, always had great chops. Yeah. Oh. And knowledge. And yeah. knowledge. Timing. She listens. Oh, yeah. She's a great collaborator. So yeah. she know, we know that about her. Oh, yeah. But it's hard to walk into a pressure situation. Yeah. You guys got to remember, I'm, I know I'm not talking to you guys, and you guys are nodding. and Like, you know this. <laughs> but I'm also yeah. talking to the audience. Yeah, sure. of course. Yeah. For our we listeners, they, um, 
there are collaborators who you know you can be comfortable with. You know they're going to bring it, but you know they're also going to pull some things out of you. Exactly. And, and that's what she wow. is. Wow. And, and that's what Doug is. So you recognize this. Yeah. And in yeah. Lynn's audition, she was able to get over the fact that the guitar player wasn't there. Yeah. yeah. And then take it from there. So so what happened was we 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 let her, we, ahead of time, we'd given her some material to work on. So when she came for the audition, she'd be prepared. She'd be prepared, yeah. Well. And you she, could tell how she prepared. She played the tunes exactly correct. Yeah. There was no mistakes. The timing was perfect. Uh, and the one thing I noticed, she, uh, I, I don't know how to say this right, but she, everything was there, but she hadn't played in a professional band before. No, okay. Just bars. Yeah. yeah. So she, It's just a level of polish that yeah. was waiting to happen. Yeah, that's exactly. what it was. And she wanted to. Um, at the end of the audition, she's getting ready to go. And she says, I hope you'll really uh, take me serious about this. I want to be in a professional band. I never have been. So and, even uh, she knew that you'd be looking for that level of well, polish. Well, she was yeah. pretty shocked when she heard me and Lori. <laughs> and she goes, <laughs> I okay, I got to move up. It's yeah. a whole right, other level. Right. Yeah. It's a whole other yeah. level. And then um, I was it's like anything else when you see game speed. Yeah, you know game you're the speed. you're the best high school player, and then you step on the college field and you go, "What is going on here?" Exactly. You get used to that. You grow accustomed. You become practiced. You become the star of that show, and then you step on the pro the field. Uh, it's like, yeah, there's nobody from my team who could keep up with this. Just me. Yeah, and I got some work to do. So yeah. she even uh, recognized that. I'm sure the yeah. you know. I mean that happens. In any pro setting. Yeah. And when yeah. you're talking about music, though, the the amazing thing is you can hear it in the first few notes. Yes. You can't fake it. Yeah. You can't first, fake it. So. First three. Yeah. yeah. So, I agree. Okay. What did you see in Lynn? I just seen somebody who was really talented on yeah. the keyboard. Okay. Knew her way, her way around it. And then also, she took those songs, five songs we gave her serious. She mm -hmm. learned. The highs and lows, the dynamics, the exact notes, the yeah. exact tone. I'm a big tone guy. Yeah. So oh, yeah. if I if I can't get the tone where I want to, I'm not happy myself. How can I expect other people to be happy? That's how I think of it. Yeah. yeah. Again, for our listeners, dynamics. Dynamics. Now, brother. I'm a drummer. I'm a groove drummer. And uh, I like to think I got decent pocket. Yeah, but yeah, you're I, I'm not much of a soloist. No. I don't have blazing chops. Yeah. You don't need All it. I can hope to be is a guy who can support the rest of the band so that everybody goes, hey, you know what? That guy's going to do his homework. He's going to show up, and he's going to play with dynamics. That's it. That, that I'm capable of. So for our listeners, dynamics is volume. Yes. And your ability to manipulate the way that the audience feels when they hear you play yes. has a lot to do with the volume that you play Um within the song yes exactly and it's in your hands and if not the you equipment. Are, it's it, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely that's a great point because when you're when you're playing your instrument becomes your voice and yes. your method of expression and you could hear that so for somebody who didn't have pro polish you could still hear that yeah. she's she's going to be capable of communicating to the audience absolutely absolutely yeah and here's the thing about that too where you just um, described that makes a lot of sense what i noticed in my career anyway less is better yeah, yeah. so so <laughs> chop guy you know if you want to be a billy cobham you got to do billy cobham yeah world, guess right? what there's one there's one uh, already there yeah, yeah. That's a tough act to follow. want to be a stanley but, clark uh, well yeah. you know he's already done that yeah but that's a the music business everyone has pretty much covered everybody yeah you know it really is true how can you make a difference in what you're doing yep is the key thing so little is better so a good pocket drummer i would take them over anybody else that no gets doubt. the idea yeah. of dynamics how to control the bridge of the sound coming out. Yeah. And then if everyone works together, mm -hmm. all those pieces, everyone's good now. Yeah. And when you hear it, everyone's yeah. great. Yeah. Because you get to hear them. Yeah. Instead of one dominant, don't get me wrong, there's the dominant guys out there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and they got their place. And they serve their purpose. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And they got their place. But 
not I'm I don't know who I could say was the best guy, you know, because I don't listen to music in those terms. I listen to how it's put together as a package yeah. so I can understand everything coming at me. It's really like when you hear somebody say something really smart at a perfect moment with the kind of intensity that you want. And sometimes intensity is volume, but sometimes intensity is a whisper. Yes. And, yeah, yeah. And when yeah. you're working together in a band, you take on the little roles. You know, you have your grand role. Like, I'm yeah. the lead guitarist. Lead guitar. It's my <laughs> it's job, job to be the lead guitarist. But other times your role is, I have to bring the band out of this bridge. Yes. And we're coming back to this, you know, That's here we I go. Did. I'm leading I'm leading us <laughs> into the vamp. And the rest of the band is is counting on me yeah. to bring us in. So those little micro roles is when a person's sincerity comes out. And it's like yeah. you can, you know, hey, great chops. Everybody loves great chops. Yeah. But when you hear a guy, and this is why, you know, musicians tend to love each other differently because it's like, man, that guy, here's where I'm coming from. Yes. And I know I can <laughs> depend on him to bring me back out of that bridge. Exactly. You know, just you little things like other. that. Yeah. So y you could feel a trust like that in first Lynn and eventually Doug. But yeah. Yeah. I don't want to cut off Lynn's story because when she started in the band, how long did it take for you to kind of help her come to speed? She pretty much did it on her own by the material that we were giving her. Yeah. Because some of the material is not necessarily that easy to cover. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so the the reality of it is tone again. I always go back to that because she mm. was learned to, she already knew it, but then she was forced to actually make the tone that was on the material. Yeah. We were cutting. That's hard. That's yeah. not a... That's the yeah. difference. That's a huge responsibility yeah. for a keyboard player, too. Yeah. Exactly. Well, they she, got the widest variety. She did it. Of tools, yeah. She did it. She's phenomenal. She's better today yeah. yep. than she was in the band. She's incredible. Wow. Because you got to see her. In, well, she told me herself that her left hand is probably 85% yeah. of what it, what it once was. I agree. But that doesn't. It's, it's it doesn't speak to what her voice is, oh, you know, voice, on our instrument. Wow. Not her, not her singing voice, yeah. which we'll talk about different, you know, separately. But her, her voice on the instrument. Yeah, you know, there are. I mean, look at BB King at the end of his life and career. He he couldn't blaze like he once could. No, heck no. But every single note he played was counted. Damn important. <laughs> yeah, hey, you could feel it. Yeah. You could feel it. Yeah, great guy, great guitarist. Yeah. For wow. sure. Okay, so now the thing uh, that I also notice is that you had a role not only as a band leader, you had to guide the musical, you know, choices, responsibilities. Yeah, everything. You had a responsibility to provide a product that yeah. could could address everybody's good time. Yeah. But you were also cultivating these young musicians mm -hmm. and creating a situation for people to walk into and grow. Talk oh, yeah. about your the importance of that. I mean, at what point in your career did you realize, like, man, I got to start mentoring. Mentoring. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was 17. I was 17 when I first played in a professional band. Uh-huh. So back in those days, um, it, was, it wasn't easy because you had to play that six-night yeah. gig, you know. Uh -huh. So we'd go Las Vegas, then we, you know, when you're new as a, pro band on the circuit back then you got all the crummy gigs okay okay so we would have to be a, you know nevada lodge up in uh north lake tahoe right yeah you play there three weeks and all of a sudden <laughs> the next day you got to be in las vegas to play at harris oh, and yeah. so you know there was, by the way you don't have a cushy tour bus yeah yeah <laughs> and you got to pack up yeah. that night so we we got to where your grand torino station wagon <laughs> yeah 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 that was, it was a 1964 chevy okay but uh so you had to put you had to put it together and then get on the road and yeah. you had to be there on time and somehow somebody had to you had to drive in shifts or something so you could have get enough rest to play the next night and we had to have somebody in charge of filling the radiator up oh uh, uh, yeah <laughs> yeah water yeah because you know it wasn't the you know it was that was but anyway it was 17 years old when we did it and I learned off that stent. That band was called Whiskey Straight. Okay. 
And uh, that was back in the Southern Rock days. That's you know, a good Southern Rock those? band name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we later turned it on to Fossils of Rock. <laughs> Fossils of Rock. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we kept getting that's a older. band that's got a lot of miles on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We kept getting older and older going, Jesus, man, we're, we're not going. You know, we're just, how long are we going to do this? What was on the set list for that band? Uh, Give us some highlights. I... You guys and you and being a band that's together for a long time and doing a lot of road, you probably had if you accumulated all the songs you had learned over the, you know, and put on the set list, you probably had a rotation that included two thousand songs. Yeah, <laughs> uh, pro- yeah. yeah. I think we and so Push Play songs. had over eight hundred. Yeah, sure. Oh, that's uh, brutal. Yeah, <laughs> maybe more than that if we all sat down and said, "Here's what other songs." You I guys know, were the and, custodian uh, of yeah. everybody's good time. Exactly. Yeah. I took it serious. Yeah, you we have did. To. We even learned on the recorded albums or CDs that we were covering. Yeah. We would actually learn the mistakes that were recorded yep. that they let go. Sure. So, so we could really <laughs> authenticate exactly. Oh, that's terrific. What that was, and that's yeah. what we'd be told by people. Yeah. We would have people come up, and they would tell us, you know, you're you're faking it. You're playing. The you know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're not playing that no, guitar. No, that's called executing. Yeah. And they told Doug the same thing. <laughs> Doug, he's not playing games. that guitar. Right. Yeah. They said you learned the, faking the, it. The, the, you know, plucks and scratches and, you know, yeah. even if the guy dropped a guitar during exactly. the Exactly. Yeah. I dropped my guitar during the song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and then and they told us, oh, yeah, you're, you guys, you're lip syncing and you're yeah. faking it because the harmonies are always so tight. Oh, yeah. my god. And I just take it as a pat on the back. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, sure we are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's, That's how terrific. I started looking. At first, yeah. I was upset about it. I remember yeah. when we were playing outside at Arco Arena, that one show. Yeah, for and, ABC. And, and it was all, for ABC Sports. Yeah, yeah. and all those they, people were walking by to go in. They just quit going in. They just stopped and were staring. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> the stadium yeah. filled up late because yeah. everybody's hanging yeah. right outside. Yeah, they were. They were. Yeah. What I used to get a kick out of was the kids. Yeah, uh-huh. the kids because uh, remember when we were at Dixon Mayfair? Yes, and the kids out there are just like what the? This what? is real. You know the thing is, a lot of kids, especially nowadays, the further we get, a lot of kids are and boy, it's going to get a lot worse yeah. in the next year or so. A lot of kids just don't have live like music, music in their life. Correct. And when we were growing up, it was a lot more accessible. I mean, I yeah. grew up around, my dad's a singer and sax player, so there was live music in the house. And it was it was all around and, yeah, you're and very accessible. But I knew how lucky I was because I would talk to my friends at school and they would say things like, I'd never seen a band before. Wow. You know, and it's, you're getting into high school. It's like, what do you mean you never seen a band yeah. before? So in, in your ability to communicate, I mean, it, the importance of the music you you left with the world has to do with the emotions that everybody carried. But just imagine the exposure you created for yeah. some kids who had never seen did. somebody with an did. instrument in their hand. And may, and may know never know how well they did or yeah. are doing. Yeah. You know, that's, that's really Oh, yeah. True. There's going to be a, a great musician. You know, now or 10 years or 20 years from now, who says, man, I first time I walked by, I was on my way to first. My dad brought me to watch a basketball game and there was this band called Push Play playing yep. outside. <laughs> I had no idea what I was looking at. And that's why I have a guitar. Exactly. Yeah. I'd seen yeah. it. I'd seen it. We played a uh, um, um, what was a bluegrass festival uh-huh. once. And remember, we played a bluegrass yeah. and those are great players. Oh, man. yeah. Great yeah, players. Yeah. They, they, I they was hired, shocked. They hired us for fun. I mean, yeah. these players are great pickers and they hired us be, for their night off yep. to entertain them. So I remember we're playing. And you want to talk this, about some pressure. Yeah, there's this. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> these are real players. And there's this, I remember there's like a, a three year old kid out there and he's just doing just like I did when I was a child. He's just staring. Yeah. Just in awe. Mouth again. Remember, I jumped off the stage yeah. and I ran right up to him. Yeah. And, and he was like, oh my God. Well, you know, and that, in addition to be over, being overwhelmed with this just, you yeah. know, grand sound coming at him, he looks up at you, you look back at him, suddenly there's nobody else. There's, exactly. There are 10,000 people in the room, but it's just you and him, and he's the most important guy there. Yep. What do you think yeah. that does for a you oh, know, for he's a, a picker. That if, kid is a picker to this uh, day. I guarantee it. Yeah. And right. Dougie was, uh, and I knew this the first gig we played. Yeah. Uh, 
We, did, we didn't have to rehearse showmanship. Nope. We didn't <laughs> I had that. I had that. But, down. but a lot of times you do have to talk about it. You need yeah. to teach people yeah. that they got to communicate. Don't just play and stare at the floor. Well, you get good Lock. at your instrument in your bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. And some guys never come out of there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You hit it on the head. Yeah. I call them bedroom players. Yeah. Yes. And nothing against them. No. Because they're playing. Hey, go yeah. in there and play, hey, man. Please, man. Feel but the joy. This depends on really where you want to go with it. Yeah. If you want to get and, on stage. Uh, but you, he was uh, good. I remember you were throwing all the pics that one show at oh, all the on. girls. Yeah. yeah oh, the yeah. girls loved him. Oh, yeah. I got some great <laughs> rock star moments. Yeah, our biggest gigs, we played. We didn't play covers. Our biggest gigs. Our originals. Our, we yeah. played originals. Yeah. And we had to win over crowds, and we played for a certain pop star. I'm not going to mention because we don't want to be sued. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, but we opened for this pop star. Well, quite a few. And, yeah, and but this one certain pop star wanted to make it hard on us the whole time. Oh. Yeah. And she had taken away our dressing room, which is basically a house. Okay, that, that eliminates half of the population, so it was a she. Yeah. Keep going. It was a she. <laughs> I'll let you know. I I can drop some hints. I just won't say the name. Yeah. And she had just come off some huge fumble on live television. Uh, I see. On Saturday Night Live. Uh huh. So I think that's all I need to say. I remember when that happened. Yeah. So you know who I'm talking about. So probably a lot of the audience. So she uh she tried to take our she did take our dressing room away and gave it to her dogs. Oh come on. And then she her father said, "You guys cannot have a sound check. You only get a line check. You get up there." And we run your lines to the board, and we make sure you have electricity. What is even the purpose of all this? Just being shallow. Like I said, fake yeah. fake musicians are yeah. shallow. And right. they go. They have to control every little thing. It's not a brotherhood with them because yeah. they're trying to be famous. And anybody getting in the way of their light, they see as an obstacle. But we're there in support. Sure. We're in support. By the way, this is true in, in every uh, occupation. You know, yeah. that, that person exist in every occupation and they get a little bit of you know power at their job whatever it is and suddenly the only thing that they can do to hang on to it is take it away from everybody else exactly so and then you have stevie wonder and then, and you, then you have stevie you wonder know, so. and exactly and, doesn't need to worry yeah, about petty things about and that. then you have the government more the worst job you do they promote the, you yes, out of the right. department <laughs> yeah i never understood that nope. one yeah no. That's the Peter That's principle. like saying, let's find the worst guitarist band in the world. Yeah. yeah. Let's promote them up to open up here. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh-huh. and, and going on to that show, uh, to go do our line check, we thought for sure, you know, we're just going to plug in our instruments, do a line check. Uh-huh. Their sa- her sound man said, no, we're doing a full sound yeah. check. Uh-huh. Gave us 45 minute yeah. sound check. He loved us. All the crew loved us. Of course. Everybody was really cool and great people. Yeah. And but but the, we had to win over that crowd. You know, we're a bunch of old farts. Yeah. And I remember we, we did. I that had to be a tough up, crowd. Oh, we go up on stage and median age of that yes. crowd yes. is probably seventy five percent female and median age in that crowd. And yes. female and the only males were the dads bringing their daughters. Exactly. And, and the median age him. of the band is eleven. Exactly. <laughs> you I got mean, it, of the buddy. crowd. Yeah. I remember the look on their faces when we You've first went up there. Yeah, he knows. Yeah. We we first go out there, and I see these kids, and they're like, who's this old farts with a Les Paul guitar? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. and we start playing. That's giving them a lot of credit, thinking but they could identify Les we, Paul. Go ahead. But we knew we were good. We knew uh-huh. we had great material. Even her sound man knew that. Yeah. And he really dialed us in. So I remember doing the first song, and we got a smattering of applause. Okay. And then... The second song, there's more and more applause. By uh-huh. the third song, I remember looking out and nobody was moving. They're all at the merch tents. Nobody's moving. Nobody's buying beer. They're just staring. And by the end of our set, we had that entire audience won. And we had they to were, do that a lot. Yeah. They were going berserk. <laughs> they were going berserk, dude. They, they loosened up. Yeah. And, uh, they. It, it was good. But you had Doug out there in the front throwing out guitar picks. Yes. And yeah. little girls were yes, going, yeah. I'm taking this as my souvenir. A rock star <laughs> threw a guitar pick at me. <laughs> yeah. What we tried to do was uh, coordinate our moves. To, we did a lot of different things. Yes. Yeah. So we, our guitars, we'd make sure they were going at the same, same time. time. Yeah. 
Yeah, after a while, learn you get the best natural. of every discipline yes. for every environment. Exactly. Yeah. 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 We were trained yeah. by trained really well by Mark by that point. Man. But I tell you, it took me. You guys a, were like a three ring circus. Oh yeah, yeah we put on fun. a total show, yeah. and I, I tell you what, the first year in the band, I was uncomfortable yeah. on stage. It took a whole year until I was comfortable on stage. Doesn't it always? I mean, it takes a year yeah, just to find your feet under. It, just to not be ahead of your skis on exactly. anything. So now add to that dynamic. You're just trying to get good at something, but there's a thousand people yeah. watching you right? <laughs> yeah. get good at this thing, whatever yeah. it is. So yeah, if it just took you a yeah. year, Hey man, that sounds great. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I dialed it in though. But when I first started, the main problem I had, I learned a lot of bad habits playing in bars. And one of the things I would always do is adjust my volume pedal or my volume knob well, when you're working on direct and, you, and you're plugging in direct, back, mm. especially back in 2007, the digital equipment didn't allow that. If you turn down your volume pedal for, or your volume knob one little inch, yeah. you cut out completely. Right. I didn't understand that because I was playing in bars, and this is how you quiet down. This is how you go loud. Yeah. Mark, Digital is made me. out of ones and zeros. Exactly. Mark so, put it all in my hands, mm -hmm. taught me that it's all about your hands are going to do the dynamics yeah not the volume knob it's going to be in yes, your hands yes yes and yeah. that took a lot of time to learn but thank yeah, god yeah you got it uh, though yeah no i you got, got it, it. <laughs> i remember you worked up you know that's one thing you did do doug all the time and i don't know if you remember this anytime you came to rehearsal every time you got a little better. Oh, yeah. A little better. A mm. little better. You could see the incremental improvements. I could see oh, it. Yeah. 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 And then I could see it when each time you'd get to a certain level, then we'd talk about technique. Yeah. Exactly. You know, philosophy, things that we think or I think and that make you a session player, somebody that's respected. Yeah. So my goal was always to... And it might sound funny, but my goal was always to be very complex, but make it sound like you could just walk up anybody yeah. and do what I'm doing. Exactly. Well, it looks easy. That's the, <laughs> that's the thing that, that identifies genius, right? When exactly. you, the, you look at the guy and you go, oh, yeah, I could do that. Right? Exactly. Until you get the instrument in your hand, you realize, oh, I can't well, do I that. I can't do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that also encourages the people in the audience. Yes. You know, and it encourages that kid who looks easy. I is like, oh man, I can do it. That's yes. the plan. Yeah, that's the plan. I learned that from my father. He was a guitarist, and he played um, in the Merle uh, Travis band back in the day. Yeah, and wow. so he's a lead guitar player. And so he told me, he said, "Son, you ain't ever gonna be a singer, but if you're gonna be a guitar player, you better be good." Hmm. That's what he told me. Well, I said, okay, Dad. I love these uh, nuggets of wisdom we take with us because it's like, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. I'm going to lock that one away. Well, it worked. His was advice right. was be he good was right. at it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just be good at it, man. I was disappointed that he said I'd never be a singer. Hey, this is Pete A. Turner from Lions Rock Productions. We create podcasts around here. And if you, your brand, or your company want to figure out how to do a podcast, just talk to me. I'll give you the advice on the right gear, the best plan, and show you how to take a podcast that makes sense for you, that's sustainable, that's scalable, and fun. Hit me up at Pete at BreakItDownShow.com. Let me help. I want to hear about it. I was disappointed that he said I'd never be a singer. but I think He yeah. has a great voice also. But he... Uh, he was right. I mean, my gift was in the instrument itself. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. But he, he taught me just a lot of techniques that I wouldn't have known. You know, nobody's usually will he, walk yeah. up and say, here, let me show you something no. that will help you. Exactly. Yeah. You got to learn it, you know. You got to seek it out. And you got to, that's the difference in when you talk about accelerating the speed of, you know, cut, uh, achieving the professional polish or whatever is that we all have especially now with youtube we all have access to all this amazing information remember yeah. how hard it was yeah. when to find a song i don't even know how hard it was w when you were growing up mark but when D doug and i were growing up just finding a song yes or you know you'd learn something about how somebody played something you'd realize i was playing that all wrong, all wrong. the whole whole time i the, know the, the thing that uh, ghost note man the yep. th yes exactly um I, uh, when I was 19 years old, I studied with Dave Garibaldi. Wow. Very briefly. Awesome. I was not 
serious enough that he that he hung on to me for any length of time. You're young. But I learned a lot of great lessons in the brief time that I studied with him. And, you know, I remember I went to his house and at first I had to grasp, like, I'm standing in Dave Garibaldi's house. Yeah. <laughs> and then he said, well, come on back. I want to hear you play. And then I walked back to his back room and I was like, there's his red Yamaha drum set. Oh, my God. And he goes, well, have a seat. And I was like, I'm getting, I'm getting ready the, to sit down at his red Yamaha <laughs> drum set. And then what did I do? I played Squib Cakes. And I <laughs> was not close. But I had oh, no wow. idea I wasn't yeah. close. Cause I you was don't know what you sit, don't know. I, yeah. I, what's a grace note? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, <laughs> with the ability to seek out yeah. all this information, like you have to cut through all the crap yes. now. Yes. And what's going to separate the really good players, the players whose sincerity comes out yeah. and whose chops get tasty, is that now you have this glut of information, you got to be able to toss aside the worthless stuff. Exactly. And get to the meat and potatoes. I want to go back, though, because we never really finished um, Lynn's story. And I want to touch on the fact that, uh, you, Doug, you and Lynn were playing together in bars. She lands a gig with Mark. She had to leave your band to take that gig. Oh, yeah, yeah, she yeah, did. Yeah, and yeah. I wished her well because it was such a great gig. I was like, I wish I had that gig. Yeah. And I, I wish well for my friends. I want them to do good in life. So I was like, yes, I please. know it was tough to let her go out of that oh, band, it though. because she's the greatest musician, and yeah. she's, she's what made us different. She's yeah. Lynn, you know, and and losing her. That'd but, be tough. But I wish her well. At first, I was like, I told her, and we still laugh about this. I said, oh, I'm going to quit playing altogether. <laughs> And she says, you better not quit playing, you know. And then she comes back for me a year later. Wow. Because that's who Lynn is. I think that was so her, a year later plan, was when really. she yep. and and your audition with Mark came at, at Lynn's recommendation. Yeah. And she knew after playing with you, Mark, for a year that regardless of what Doug did not have, yeah. he had what was important. She knew. In her, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She, she knew. knew. Yeah. Okay, so then you get the gig, you start off, you're doing a year of just concentrated learning, oh, yeah. hanging in breaking there. Breaking bad habits. Yeah. Oh, yeah. breaking bad habits. Like, like I was saying with the volume knob, yeah. he had me tape my volume <laughs> knob so I, I would quit that. This is awesome. It. And yeah. I thank God, brother. Yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Tape the volume knob. What other <laughs> Mr. Miyagi guitar oh. tricks did you whip out? <laughs> oh, on? a lot. Like I said, I had a heavy hand from playing heavy metal, yeah. so I had to break that. When yeah. you're playing on a big PA system, it picks up. Everything. Everything. Yeah. String noise. No string uh -huh. noise. Nowhere to hide. String noise. And That's like me with the grace notes. Yeah, I didn't know what yeah. a grace note was. You had no idea that string noise existed. Exactly. Until you're in this environment that exposes all Every, of yes, everything. Yes, it's like being butt naked in front of everybody. And I realized, <laughs> oh my God, my guitars aren't good enough because yeah. they buzzed. Right. I had to get all new equipment. I had to get... That's a Mark. You want to play with Mark, you have to use the best equipment. You got to have good stuff. If you're going to be a great musician, you got to have the best equipment. And by the way, out. I'm going to remind our listeners, this is a guy who's saying everything is in your hands. Yes. So it's true that somebody with great hands and, and the ability to emote, the real stars who can really communicate musically can grab anything and be, yeah. and and be great but really to achieve greatness at the level where you can deliver for every crowd in every setting you have to have the best you got to have the great you, gotta you gotta have, have great best. gear too yes. oh without so, it it'll hold you back it'll yeah. hold you back i mean i had the bad gear yeah i like, just like doug i had really bad I, I first started playing i was five years old uh-huh and it was from an acoustic silver tone of course <laughs> sears guitar that yeah. was all beat what are we gonna do now that there's no sears anyway <laughs> um yeah but that was holding me back. Yeah. First song I ever learned was uh, Silent Night, my dad showed me. Okay. And so he, when he came back um, off the road there, he usually be gone uh, three, four months at a time. Wow. And then um, he, we, after he got kind of relaxed the next day or two, he'd go, okay, show me what you know. Mm. Show me what you learned. So you had every every three or four months, you had to check in, and you had to show some progress. Yeah, and I, and I did. I, I was did. so did. serious yeah. about yeah. it, you yeah. know. And so he... What you been doing in that woodshed, boy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could tell you some things there, too. But he, he, he influenced me greatly. I didn't care for the Chet Action style. Okay. And that Merle Travis 
it's a very different style. Yeah. I, I, but I gained respect for it when I tried to emulate it. Oh, yeah. Because mm. yeah. I realized, wait a minute, now this is very yeah, this is special. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, once I got that style figured out, then I seen really where my dad was coming from. But he... But once again, you look at a guy like Chet Atkins, and, and, wow. you, and you go, oh, I can do that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> I'm still working my way up to yeah, that right. level, brother, until yeah. I die. Uh, yeah, that's a fantastic guitarist. And, you know, yeah. Roy Clark was, too. Oh, Roy Clark oh, was a best. monk guy. He was a 400-pound gorilla. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That guy was – oh, man. He did some – Did you guys ever see that video where St- Steve Lukather and Glenn Campbell, and they're just horsing Glenn. around – and then and, and Luke says, hey, uh, I remember when you played on whatever, like there was a thing on Hee Haw that you did. And <laughs> yeah. It was just you and Roy Clark. And then at the end of something, you'd just play a phrase. And then just coming out of the phrase, you'd go, Brr, and he'd run down the fretboard and he'd, and just really horsing around. Yeah. And, you know, when you hear players Techniques. like that, man, you can't deny the miles. No. And, and one of the things we're celebrating in this conversation with you, Mark, is the just amount of sheer miles. Yes. They come out of the studio. Yeah. A lot yep. of people don't know that. Yeah, but right. that's where Glenn Campbell came from. Oh, of course, from. yeah. And uh, he's a hell of a guitarist. Oh, oh. he was a monster. Uh, yeah. So but Roy it. Clark, same Roy thing. Roy Clark, too, yeah. Studio. Studio uh. guy. I, I started working in the studios. um in Los Angeles, when I was was I think first first one was twenty three. Okay, and uh, I didn't work much. Mm. Sad state of affairs. Yeah, well, <laughs> you were you're in young. Los Angeles well, and you were yep. young, and Tommy Tedesco I, was alive. So <laughs> what could you do? <laughs> well, I didn't know enough styles. Yeah, yeah, yep, you you know, it was one dimensional, right. you know. Okay, and I, I learned real quick. I'm gonna starve to death. Yeah, and so I thought <laughs> until I it, it, yeah starved to death until I expand my repertoire a little bit. Right. Exactly. What was lacking at that time? Just the ability to cross over. Yeah, because well, cross over into what? 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 Well, what did you have to go seek out? There, well, there was all kinds. There was country rock. Yeah. There was folk music. Yeah. Hard rock and roll. Oh boy. You know, it was just everything really. Uh, Southern rock at that time it almost was falling out of. Other than the faithful fans, it was yeah. People were moving on to Death Leopard and I you see. know all yeah. those things. Uh, Grateful Dead. So you're talking about you were in the early '80s. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, what I so learned, this is almost coming out of the Wrecking Crew days already. Yeah. yeah. And in the early '80s was when really bands started to take over. You know, MTV. Yeah. Um, yeah. Started up, so we were paying attention to all of and, that. And they peaked. Yeah. That, yeah they when peaked. they peaked, I think, and you see if you agree with me, Doug, I think was between 70 and 76 mm-hmm. was the peak of what happened recorded is recorded me. We got a lot of music. knowledge in school. Yeah. A lot of band. Yeah. You take jazz class. You could take, yep. you know, it, March, it was just a lot we could learn. Yep. And you learned to read music. Exactly. Yeah. Thank God. Right? Yeah. Well, that's that, when I experienced the tail end of that. Yeah. If just barely. Yeah. You're lucky. Yeah. Because nowadays the kids don't get that. No, they don't. That explains why three three chord bang made it. Yeah. yeah. I'm watching. I'm going. Where's how how did this happen? Yep. When you look at it, it was education. Yeah. yeah. Education. Not everyone has the opportunity to learn to play by ear and to read music. Yeah. Exactly. Sight read quickly. Yep. And uh, that's important, I think. Sure. You know? Well, it's it's a tool that, if it's not there anymore, it just creates either a different environment where you're not going to get as much done or you're not going to yeah. get as much done as quickly, or you're, you, you put uh, the same musical genius in a different time period, and now he has different access to tools. And if you take his tools away, yeah. you know what happens. Yeah. You can't build that's, anything. That's, exactly. that's right. <laughs> that's how I feel about it. Yeah. You know, and but that's not a knock on what I'm hearing today. Mm-hmm. I, I listen to Oh, there's to some it. good stuff. Yeah, there's and always good there stuff. There is. And I try to break it down and understand. Mm-hmm. And most of the time what I'm breaking down is one keyboard yeah. <laughs> playing everything. <laughs> yeah. And it's, and, yeah. It's, and it's just and adequate, drum loop. adequate keyboards. Yeah. And I, I blame that on education. Sure. Yeah. You know? Yes, because dynamics, 
It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah. gone. You know? And I and I also it, that also practice discipline. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, there it is. That's part of it. And then you also have the other spectrum where tonality yeah. is gone. That's yeah. not there no more. Yep. It's like percussionists, drummers, who I respect very much. One shoe fits all now. Yeah. yeah. They, they're not dynamic. They just start banging, and yep. then it's that through the whole song. And that's. Uh, except that's, the great. That's where all the fun is. Yeah. That's you know? how you sound good. Yeah. Yeah. And to go up and down peaks and valleys, to go on a voyage. You, you, if if you're just playing at 10, there's nowhere to go. Yep. <laughs> you know, if you're, yep. if you're cranked up. That's there's what I learned no also <laughs> about playing in a pro band is, is what I didn't understand playing in bars is we would have the amplifiers up loud. And if you ever see a band and you just know something's not right, everything's all jumbly and it's uh -huh. all a mess. Well, it's because their stage volume is cranked up it's to 10. all the way up and it's the same all yes. the way through. So the, the engineer has nowhere to go if you're turned up to 10. Yeah. What can he do? No headroom. Nothing. Room. We, no would, head we had Also, a, where can you go emotionally as a, a listener? Exactly. If you just get 10 slapped on you, you well, know, you nowhere to go. You're, you're in the ring with Tyson. Out, we yeah. had it so quiet. Our stage volume, even in the biggest gigs, was so quiet. We could whisper to each other. Yeah, we uh, could talk on stage. <laughs> we could yeah. talk on stage like like we are right now. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, and that's how it should be. That's how it, it should is. be. If your sound engineer is good, and we yeah. had a yeah. good one, and Rick. Oh yeah. Um, he got better and better. Yeah. We worked with him a lot. He was a good engineer anyway, but towards the end of our our band when everyone started having strokes and all this yeah stuff. we all got uh, old <laughs> <laughs> but anyway um he's a great engineer he knew exactly what to do yeah. he learned it uh, from you though uh, to be fair he yeah, learned it all uh, from mark mark knows Fre everything Fre frequency you know he knew how to set the dynamic for up close gigs yeah. far away i mean it just was great yeah so oh, that man, helped. That Having that a, body of knowledge too is her, is suffering a serious blow right now. Oh yeah, because the because there's no live music. They're right out now. of work. Yeah, out of practice. Everybody's out of work, out of practice, and there's gonna be a generation that yep. that you hit. It. Yeah. Yep. Oh man, I've been stepping in that too. It's actually for me. I'm depressed about that. Yeah, because it's just my, my and I know Doug's a lot philosophy is the same and i bet yours is too you, if you can give something mm -hmm. to make our business better our industry better fan base better people happiness yes. by listening happiness quotient in yeah. the communication then we won the battle yeah we, yep. used, we used to do a thing every year called dirt stock We'd have hundreds of people come, for fun. Yeah, for but they fun. were all our friends who were musicians. Yeah, that's the only friends I have. They're musicians, <laughs> right, right? So yeah. I had and, to get married on a Sunday. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but our philosophy there was the same. Everyone gets to play. Yeah, and we don't care how good you are or how how bad you are, uh -huh. as long as the experience was good and motivated you to play more. And the end of the day, you're gonna get you're gonna be better. Yeah, the exactly. end of this day, everybody is gonna be better. And yeah. it went on from morning to night. Oh, it, yeah. it would culminate yeah. if everybody around a fireplace and an acoustic guitar. Uh -huh. You know, everybody's yeah. singing their songs. Wow, that was the best stuff. Dirt stock, huh? Dirt stock. Where did you used to throw this in. event? Um, uh, what was it? God, I can't even remember. East Park Reservoir. There okay. It yeah. Yeah. Wow. And it was cool because we never had any problems. Nope. Uh, we kept good control of it. There's a couple, they weren't security guys, but they're good yeah. friends that would provide the security, security of somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we never got, never Thanks, had any Charlie issue. or whatever his yeah. name And like then that. sometimes, um, you know, when we were rocking out at night, the uh, sheriffs would come out there, uh -huh. and then they'd say, well, just turn it down a little bit. They yeah. never said stop, because uh, right cool. they, they would sit out there and listen. <laughs> yeah. They out there listening. Wow. So, you know, you can have good stuff like that. I think it's positive. I just want to see music grow again, but I am worried about this situation yes. that you mentioned here, because that really is, that's a fact. I just want to say... Um, you know, when you, you go, oh, here comes a sheriff deputy. He's walking up. He's going to tell us to, t oh, no, he's dancing. 
Yeah. <laughs> I think we'll be all right. We'll be all right. They he just wants to talk to us. Yeah. <laughs> they were pretty cool. Yeah. But, you know, and then they eventually never came out anymore. No. Yeah. People would call them there. No, that's we push play. We yeah, yeah. It's not threatening. No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just a bunch of musicians yeah. singing. But yeah. I do hope, when I have, I, I really do hope to get education back in school somehow yes yeah because that's what made it peak in those 70s you yep. had some wonderful you can just listen to the recordings and go oh my god eagles yep you know? Fleetwood Mac well but going back to the education though I mean you know having m music education in school I don't know how to there's a thing that you learn in music education that has to do with spatial awareness. Yeah. Because everything that I do, and I'm saying this in front of you guys because I know you're 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 gonna go yes. Um, math makes sense to me because yeah. of music. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, yeah. relationship, every yeah. relationship spatially yep. you with, hit it. everything makes sense because of music. And even if I yeah. had to quit music, and I did, I didn't play music for 15 years. Wow. Holy. But even when you quit music, you can't quit musicians. No, no. You know, there's a fraternity yep. that I would still be around musicians, and I'd be like, yeah, man, I haven't played in years. And then, you know, you get that look like, I don't know. You, you'll be back. You'll be back. Yeah. yeah. And sure enough, you know, eventually you come around and you go, I can't, I can't squash this voice anymore. I got to no. let it out. So when you're doing – uh preparations in a band like this and you've got all these young uh younger players in the band and you're mentoring this thing is there a point at which you look and you go it's working i knew it was working as soon as we assembled it yeah because yeah. we had first gig we had johnny rock remember yeah. john yeah hell of a, a bass, bass player, player. Huh. i mean uh sorry about that but, that's a uh, uh that's a, that's almost a it, was his real name Johnny Rock? Yeah. 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 So you, you can't ignore that. You have to play. You, yeah. Yeah. you have to play bass if you're named Johnny Rock. Right. right. Wow. And he also was a, yeah. a Hey, good, sorry, Johnny. Yeah. You're not going to be an accountant. Yeah. No. <laughs> and he was a good singer, too. Yeah. Yeah. He was really good. Yeah. So we had him, and I felt fortunate. I didn't realize just how good Johnny Rock was. I, You know, we've yeah. been together, what, our band, 18, 19 years, and I... I had forgotten how good Johnny Rock really was. And I listened back. Lori played some recordings of us back then. I thought, Jesus, that bass player's pretty good. But that good. was recorded live on a little crummy yeah. thing. And it sounded great. I was like, wow. And then the, uh, but Johnny Rock was hitting everything yeah. where he should have. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and Dave Cherry. Dave Cherry was a great forget. drummer. Yeah. Great drummer and Pocket vocals. drummer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we didn't need him to play all over the place. And yeah. if he started to, I'd tone him down and say, Dave, <laughs> that part's been covered. Don't do that, okay? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, everybody's trying to dance, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He understood that, though. He was a real pro. Dave he, he did. He was Dave one of the played in professional bands all his, his life. life. And it showed. Yeah. You know? it and showed. that's what we wanted to do. We never wanted to accomplish. We wanted to play in bars. Well, what are you going to get? And, and there's dollars. nothing against that, by the way. You got to yeah. play. Yeah, for fun. Where you got to play. Right. The, whatever it takes. You got to play where you got to play. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So. And sometimes that's where the good time is. So yeah. hand me the keys. I'll be in charge of the good time. And if that's what you're doing out there, hey, man, keep it going. Keep it going. Keep Never it going. stop. Yeah. Never stop. And I, like I said, when I was playing bars, I'd end up with a $10 beer tab at the end of the night. <laughs> I didn't get anything. Yeah. And it wasn't until push play that, oh, my God, I just got paid a thousand hey, dollars <laughs> yeah a thousand dollars for a one night gig and before i i, I remember i played in a parking lot for ten dollars yeah you know so. yeah. yeah or they uh, there was a time where it was pay to play yeah. oh yeah for some i reason. remember that in the 80s Yes, yeah. the Omni. I was a star at the Omni, oh, man. Brother. <laughs> but you had to sell a certain amount of tickets well, you yep. didn't have to sell them yeah you, you just had just, to turn in the money the money yeah so yeah, you definitely had to pay to yeah, play. Pay yeah, to play. when that came out, I was like, don't do oh, that. Oh, this is terrible. Please yeah. don't do that. I did that. Because yeah. what happens is, <laughs> ultimately, the less musicians play for, yeah. these owners, are they're business people. They're going to keep getting, well, I pay them this. If you can't do it for that, I'll just hire them back. Yeah, exactly. And so they beat down your 
cost, and we had a standard, you know, if they couldn't meet our price, yeah. I'd say, hey, let's do the math here. I got this yeah. much musicians, a light show, yeah. stage set up, you know. Well, you got to cross, uh, you have to cross a line at, at some point with the quality of the product. Exactly. Before you can begin to demand that. But once you can begin to demand right, that, right. Oh, then yeah. it's almost a responsibility that you do because of that yes. reason. Like you and can't that's what he taught me. sell this short. No, there's too much work that went into, yeah, you know what what you delivered every night to sell it short for everybody. And look at all the years you put in to get there. That's right. You know, you yeah. start playing. A young Lynn started playing when she was five as well. I yeah. think you did too. Yeah. Yep. So that's a young age. Yeah. But by the time it's a long apprenticeship. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and you in um, you know, there's people that are stars. I and we were well known. Really, throughout the com- community, not yeah. Fairfield. Uh, you know what I was going to tell you? Here, I, this experience some, you might be interested in, because you guys are from Vallejo. You, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, do you remember at the Coronado Inn? It, this I'm was the kidding. Vallejo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Coronado. <laughs> Inn. There was a band called just behind the Mill Twelve yeah. Six. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, it was um, your county fair. Yeah. Yeah. And they used to have a battle of the bands. Yes, there. they yes, did. You remember that? I miss that. Okay. So yeah. anyway, we got some listeners to this show. They're going to identify with that. Uh, yes. Also, pre- previous guests on the show, uh, like let's see who's been on this to play the battle of the bands. Adam Molinar. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, he's a great uh, guitarist. Great guitarist. Still a great guitarist. I was a fan of his. Awesome. He's. I'm still a fan I'm of his. I'm still a fan of his. Yes. Uh, Dave yeah. Saker. Oh, Dave Saker. Dave, I, I still love still. that guy. Yeah. I will always Lovable love dude. him. Rocking the house to this <laughs> yeah. day. You know, and and uh, the guys that played those Battle of the Bands, they inspired us. To, yes. You know, because we would want that gig. Don't let me derail what what you got going on. Oh, no, oh, that's just fine. Okay. Uh, it was Alabama uh-huh. who was the headliner. There it so is. So you got to play for open for them. Yeah. So anyway, long story short, I learned a good lesson at that show uh. because – I thought I was going to be a, a rock star, man, blow this crowd away with what I had. Yeah. Had a lot of stuff, I thought. Well, we do our show, and then when Alabama come out, I found out just really how uneducated uneducu- un- un- I was on my instrument because their guitar player also played fiddle. Yeah, but the yeah. thing is, he did real simple stuff. Yes. He kept it simple. I mean, so simple. I'm like, what the hell? So what I found out from that was it don't have to be complex, Mm -hmm. out of control licks to be good. Yeah. You just need to fit your dynamic within the framework of what that band is doing. Uh I learned that from that show. Ultimately, you got to make the butts move. Yes, exactly. (laughs) And you know, Blazing Chops are impressive and great, but they don't don't make the butts move. I love making people dance. Yeah, man. That was the best reward, even more than the money. When people would get up, well, I think yeah. you liked the money a little. Bit. Oh, I did love the money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the money just allowed you to keep doing it yes. and keep climbing and and take exactly. it seriously and continue to really deliver exactly. more and more and more. Um, speaking of Battle of the Bands, and and making people's butts move. Yeah, Phil Deckard. Oh wow! You remember what a bass player he's always. I mean, he's Cry still Wolf. amazing. But Cry, Cry Wolf, Wolf dude, I love. They them. would win battles of the. They were just. They cut heads. They're one of my favorite bands. But they cut heads because they made the girls dance. Yes, they did. And you know, uh, it's all about. I still love yeah. them. Phil's been on the show. I too. remember when we. I love them. <laughs> yeah, me too. Phil, I love you. Just letting you know yes. that when we auditioned to uh, do the Kings. Shows because you didn't just get to do that. No, no, you don't. Just there was, <laughs> hey, we bought our equipment. Guess We're what? Play. Yeah, yeah, we showed up. Hi, everybody. Yeah. We bought tickets. Yeah, but there was like two hundred <laughs> and so many bands. Well, no, let's break this down for the audience. This is the Sacramento Kings. Now consider that in order to work for them at a level where you're entertaining people, because they are what the Sacramento Kings organization does for a living is entertain people. Yes. Now there are a couple different ways you can entertain people and work for the Sacramento Kings. One of them is play music. The other one is play basketball. Yep. And if you're playing basketball for the Sacramento Kings, by the way, you probably have to be seven feet tall, a physical specimen. You have to do things nobody else can do in the world. Top of the league. 
Same is true for the music. Oh, yeah. So whatever entertainment product you're going to experience when you show up with a Sacramento Kings ticket, yep. consider that what we're talking about here is that you guys are musical seven-footers. Exactly. So <laughs> where were we? They had to find you guys. You had to audition for the thing. There are, by the way, probably 10,000 bands in the Sacramento area who would love to make $1,000 a piece. <laughs> so if, uh, if you want to know what the scale of competition looks like, this is why you have to be a musical seven-footer. Yeah. Exactly. Well, there was 220 bands. <laughs> and, uh, and then fighting and, for that gig uh, Anita heard us and she said you're my band oh. so we played there more than anybody yeah uh, wow yeah, we, it, they, and it was always yeah. good it was yeah. always a I great I loved it man experience. because I remember that time the cheerleaders came up oh, oh yeah yeah, yeah the I, cheerleaders damn, even okay, loved it. Now, slow down yeah. slow down we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna savor this story it involves cheerleaders <laughs> <laughs> you don't gotta pay me for this show <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm paying for you I'm paying you guys man <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would have paid to play those guys. <laughs> okay alright <laughs> yeah. respectable was, talented like yeah. you were saying, yeah, those cheerleaders were there because they're good at what they, they work do. hard. Yeah, absolutely, they work hard. they're the seven footers of yeah, that category. Exactly. Yeah. They work hard. Uh, it was unbelievable. They were dancing like crazy. But yeah, they would come in flips and yeah, oh, maniacs. Which stuff, in I turn would, would get everybody else involved, yeah. and it would just be a wild house at that place well, when we played. I, I remember, if you had to use the restroom. Oh. oh my God! Oh yeah, we'd get swamped yeah, like a, we were the NBA stars. There'd be a hundred people in line, and so you go in there. I always went in the women's restroom <laughs> <laughs> and, because the men's I, I couldn't so handle it. <laughs> I couldn't oh. handle things went wrong there. But uh, <laughs> the women's was always cleanest, and I just go up to the front. And you go, oh yeah, you're. You're uh yeah, you you're can a go guitar player. You go ahead. Yeah. You know? yeah. So it, it worked out good for me. I know you used to do that. Oh yeah, too. I used to love walking around, <laughs> you know, during the uh during the game and after people seen us play and yeah. we'd play at halftime. We'd play before the show, we'd play at halftime, we'd play after the show. Yep. And and walk around. And of course I'd watch the games because the NBA is my jam. You know, yeah. that was another thing. I, it was my dream come true. I can't believe I'm playing NBA well, games. Well, you know. Remember shooting hoops down on the court. And we get court. to play basketball yeah. on the floor. No. Yep, and the game is over, bro. We can go down there. And, <laughs> and, so, and before, if we were set up, and we would go down there and shoot hoops. And I can yep. tell you, I shot hoops with Ronnie D. Botts. Uh, yep. I shot hoops with Peja. Yep, Peja Stoyakovich. Uh, yeah. Remember, that's yeah. when they were good. Yeah. yeah. That's when the I got a story great. about that I can't tell on the air, but I can tell you. <laughs> you just talked about going in a women's bathroom. I'm yeah. gonna hold that story well, back. It's probably pretty good. Yeah. Well, I know a lot, I know that a lot of European players smoke. Uh huh. And isn't that hilarious? That was the first time I ever seen anyone inhale two cigarettes and two drags. <laughs> <laughs> he was a big guy. Yeah, I know. To be fair, but, but then go up and run it up. But his job down. was yeah. to run up and down the court for forty-eight and minutes. Yeah. Did. That was his occupation. Yeah. And by the way, it's break time. We go have a smoke. <laughs> That's all. That's what we did. We had a smoke yep. room there. Yeah, yeah. At, and he'd uh, come in. He'd co yeah, he'd smoke. He'd smoke. <laughs> so would the <laughs> the uh, vice president guy. Forget his name. Yeah, now. he'd the, go in the there. Arena. We'd all go in there. Yeah, you know, I was running in there. They were always had, cool. Yeah, they were yeah. always cool. The, all the players were always cool. We wow. had the run of the place. We could do whatever we wanted, and I loved loading in, cool. man. Loading in, yes. I even liked, I think I had my first heart attack loading in there. Yeah, he had a heart <laughs> attack while loading in the equipment uh -huh. at the Arco Arena. I know Arena. where this story's going. Keep going. He finished the gig. Played the gig. I he did. played the gig, brother. It was yep. rough. The ch <laughs> chest pain was getting to me towards the end. But, uh -huh. uh, I remember those guys. you didn't guys, miss any of the cues. Did no, not. Those guys were going <laughs> by and they kept going, you all right, Mark? I was going. Yeah. <laughs> Just waving them on. Yeah, it, just keep going. Man. I'll yeah. be there. Wow. That was. That was uh, yeah, doctors told him he was crazy. He yeah, come it was right probably away. stupid. I'm sure, but you know, I had a commitment, and uh, you know, that's that's, that's a, when the doctor says, "Man, you were crazy for being." You know, and you go, 
You never played an instrument, huh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. You never had a gig like this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we were lucky. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, we had a good agent. The Kings actually owned our name at that time. Yeah. Oh. So, huh. yeah, once you sign a contract, you're not the owner no more. You're a wow. product. But I was happy being so, a product. Yeah, though. right. It's just a matter of, okay, what am I exchanging this for? <laughs> exactly. But we got g- permission and played a lot of other gigs. We just had to Incredible get our agent gigs. to okay it. They were... Oh, that's interesting. They were always cool. Yeah, they were it. always cool. They were always cool because we were yeah. promoting, you know, we were promoting a product and... Yeah, that's and, that's true. Yeah. And it led to a lot of incredible places, a lot of incredible gigs. Yeah. You know, like one to stick out Crazy. Carmel. You know, I, I enjoyed Carmel. that. Carmel oh, gig. man, those are great gigs. Yeah, and you see a lot of people you would never see or expect to see. Yes. You know, so I, I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. So, you know. Yeah. Well, I want to tell our audience... Um, something that we touched on earlier and that is that uh your your heart's been through a lot and you were told two years ago that you that your heart would last you maybe six months yeah that's true and you're here and still fighting and we want to you know first of all just uh appreciate how hard you're fighting yeah um (laughs) and that you're not letting it stop you from continuing to make music. Yes. And when we got here, Doug played you a song, and you grabbed your guitar and uh, and and played not just to accompany Doug, but so you could lock it in. Yeah. And uh, so the the fight continues. Um, we want to celebrate that. Yes. Uh, I want to ask you along those lines because I don't want to fail to ca- I, I I don't want to fail to capture this. Um, what is next for you a guy who's fighting the fight that you're fighting and loves music as much as you do honestly it's kind of emotional to talk about but i'll tell you i just want to complete a cd Mm -hmm. before my time's up for little doug glenn laurie and dave and my bandmates wow okay that's That's what we're doing that's all i want to do wow by God's grace, we're going to finish this project. Okay. They were all writing songs. Yeah. You know, to put together. Make it happen. Yeah. Wow. Well, we typically record an hour for this show. And uh, I don't know how you guys feel, but we're four minutes over an hour. Oh, no. I feel we great. can keep doing this as, as, <laughs> as much as you want. You don't want to get your audience too bored. Well, yeah. and the thing is, they're our, they're our audience because they don't mind. Uh, hearing us geek out like we do. <laughs> <laughs> right on. So, uh, you know, there's, um, there may not be a million listeners, but there's, uh, I'm sure it's there's several hundred, to f- maybe a few thousand out there who it's are, grueling. Yeah. who are loving geeking out as much as, as we love geeking out. So well, I appreciate you coming over and, um, well, talking to us. I'll I tell you before show. we do anything else, I, I just want to get, um, I just want to get this question out, which is, uh, you appreciate me coming over. I imagine that's an invitation to come back and do it again. Sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Because I want to do this. There's a couple of things that I definitely want to capture. We can do this every week, but I also want to make sure that we capture the progress of the CD. Yes. Because yeah. as the CD's finishing up, I want to get your thoughts about the process, about sure. you know what it is that you're you're putting on this CD that you feel is important to leave on it. And uh, maybe even capture uh, some of the other players and what it means sure. to them to to contribute to it. Get yeah, it's gonna be, gonna be great because I can tell you already the material that's being produced mm-hmm. is good material, yeah. good starting point. Yeah, and we'll build it. Yeah. We're gonna build it like you build a house. Yeah, so. terrific. Where are you recording it? Right, right here. Right here. Take right a look in, in there. Room. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I used to have a studio. Unfortunately, um, it was pretty good size. I, I, I lost a lot. I lost 50 guitars. It burned down. Wow. I lost all my Fender collection that I had. I oh. had every Fender amp you, can, you know of. I've been doing this so long. All your life. So uh, I collected everything yeah. I could collect. A bunch yeah. of Les Pauls. Uh, yeah, wow. I had nine of those. Martin guitars. Yeah, D twenty eight, Shannon Dose. Ah. Um, anyway, 
I had I'm not past that yet, but yeah. I'm I, I can't go back and relive that. But um, but I lost all that in my studio when my house. See, I had a house I built downstairs, and then uh, the second story of it was all studio. All studio. Wow. So With everything. All, yeah. All playground. Oh yeah. It was uh, it was best thing all, for me ever. Yeah. Because I love working in the studio. I like the engineering part. Yeah. I love putting together. I like playing. It's kind of like playing, really. Yeah. yeah. Because, like, you know, there comes a point in time in your world where you're trying to understand, I'm playing this right. I know what I'm hearing, but you're not. Yeah. It's a ghost note that yeah. somebody else has added to make that note sound this way that yep. don't exist. Yeah. Exactly. But yet it does because you hear it. Right. Right. Those kind of things. I love to get recorded yeah, into secrets. the songs, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. things like that. Yeah. So that's the plan is get the CD and then uh, it'll live on. Yeah. Exactly. For live sure. Live on. Well, I think your le legacy is going to live on in, in the players you've influenced. Yes. Yeah. In all of the, in all of the uh, musical legacies you've helped others create. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, man, there's nothing better than that. No. And it feels good to see players advance so well. Yeah. I mean, that's the best reward I've ever gotten. Wow. You see people like that. Yep. <laughs> I'm so proud of him. I mean, uh, he was good before, but he's... It's he's, a, whole he's, he's, he, he's <laughs> a whole nother he's level. It's a whole nother level now. He's much better now. He's yeah. getting better and better. And, and really good lead guitar player. I know he... Uh, he doesn't even like that. You know, <laughs> he, he probably never even mentions it because he don't yeah. need to tell you. Yeah, you know, right. Just do you, your you'll, thing, you'll man. Hear it. Just like Mark, I yeah. got. To, I told him that about you, Mark. That he, Mark won't tell you that he's a good guitar player. Yeah, he's just gonna show. No, you. nobody. Yeah, everybody is. Uh, you know, everybody who's capable just lets it, lets it come out in their voice. Exactly. Yeah. So. Well, so you have mus uh, session players. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I consider myself. Really. Same here. Yeah, you know, I'm, there's a secret language to the session player that is really centered around serving the song. Exactly, always. always. And in order to do that, you got to take self completely out of it. Exactly. Yeah, and that's a, pretty smart. Yeah, I live for the song. That's the main thing. I don't care about. I'm I a hack. I learned so. that from somebody else. No, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Just to understand well, if you're, that you're doing this type of thing a lot. You're you're gonna be learning a lot of stuff. You sound pretty darn knowledgeable. Oh, thanks, yeah. man. Yeah, he, he he didn't just figure this out yesterday and go, "Hey, I'm gonna do this." Yeah, yeah. there's no doubt about it. No, yeah. So, but I appreciate. The well, I'll tell you, the last guitar player who who graced this show a couple weeks ago was Elliot Randall. Wow. <laughs> he ain't no slouch. No, um, uh, no, no. Uh -uh. <laughs> and uh, I may or may not leave this in, but next month we're getting Louis Shelton. Wow, wow. yeah, it's gonna be. Good. Yeah, I'll be listening because yeah, I love be your show, John. I oh, think thanks, you're man. great at this. It's fun. Really, we just get to geek thing. out at what we like to do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm here yeah. sitting here talking to you guys about the things that you did, and that's my favorite thing yeah. to hear about. So. Same here. Yeah, and you're a musician. That helps a little. Oh yeah, yeah. Because you can, you got, you know what we're talking about. He knows the right questions he's, to ask. He's stepping right in there. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a, it's the stuff we all want to know. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's stuff. It's education. Yeah. You know, each person has a different philosophy of what they want to do. Mm -hmm. the people that you interview. Yeah. And so that means you're and list. a different experience to apply it yeah. to. You know. Your listeners get to hear different philosophies, yeah. how people play, when they start to play, what their secrets are, yeah. all those little things that I believe, and I know your other people you've interviewed believe make you better. Yeah. I'm still learning. Exactly. It's a quest. You'll never, right. never, never stop. learn enough. I'll yep. never stop learning until they th shovel dirt on me. Mm -hmm. That's me. <laughs> I'm the same way. Um, and even when they shovel dirt on you, you're going to be like, do you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> You'll probably see a little string pop up out of the dirt wiggling. Yeah. And go, that Dougie. He's still picking. <laughs> Tune that shovel. <laughs> <laughs> He's still flat on that high E. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh. That's oh, Mark man. Winslow bringing up old shit. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's where I'm <laughs> He's at. He's the man. Yeah. He's the man. He's the Yoda of guitar. I'm telling you. Man. Me. 
<laughs> well, yes, our guest today has been Mark Winslow. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed this show. If you did enjoy the show, then uh, keep listening. Tell your friends. We'll bring more. Mark, we'll be back. Yes. And we're going to capture the uh, process and what you're going through um, emotionally putting this stuff together because this piece of work is, um, dare I say, your... Uh, primary artistic focus right now yeah for, and for my bandmates i love them all so yeah, much yeah and 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 it's an artistic focus that's steeped in all that all those years of love and mentorship yeah. and so yeah let's yeah. uh let's hear what it's all about even before we actually hear it okay and, uh, yeah. we'll keep doing this thanks man thank, thank you john god bless you